morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our service. <clears throat> I lost my voice. Let's open with a word of prayer and ask God to bless our time together here. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning giving you thanks for this day, this opportunity to gather here in your name, and sing your praises and worship you, Lord. We just pray that we do that in a befitting way to you. We especially want to lift up all those on our prayer list this morning, Lord, and ask your blessings on each and every one of them, whether it's sickness or loss of loved one, whatever it may be, Lord, we just ask you to be with them. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We'd like to welcome, if you're a guest this morning, if you would uh, remove the little tab on the side of your bulletin and fill that out, we'd like to have a record of your visit. If you have any kind of special prayer request or anything, you can also put it on there and put it in the collection plate when it comes around. <clears throat> but we're happy you came to worship the Lord with us this morning. Uh, and our scripture verse of the week is the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This week we pray for New Hope Baptist Church of the word of the day, our, <clears throat> our praying, however, needs to be pressed and pursued with an energy that never tries, a persistency which will not be denied, and a courage which never fails by E.M. Bonds. Uh, we want to welcome new members, Brandy Horn and Dewana Anderson. As the youth will be going uh, Danville, but I think February the 9th already passed, I believe. <laughs> That's already happened. <laughs> the Bags of Hope Food Pantry will be open Tuesday from 5 to 5.30. <clears throat> Senior Day Out, February the 19th to the Bread of Life for lunch. This place was not started by Tasty Rolls, but by the love of one couple had for children. The bus will leave at 10 a.m., a special call business meeting February the 25th after the morning service <clears throat> to vote on proposal from trustees and other committees for renovating the sanctuary by remodeling the pulpit area, having pews refinished and upholstered, taking a welcome center in the back room, painting, etc., and for financing the project. Thank you to Thank you for your continued support for our ongoing ministries, Operation Christmas Child Shoebox and Bags of Hope Food Pantry. Other opportunities are Sunday school at 9.45, uh, Tuesdays, ladies and men's prayer groups at 9 a.m., and then Wednesday night Bible study, prayer, youth and children. I believe that's it. Do we have anybody that has a birthday or an anniversary? We got one way back in the back. <laughs> I would guess about one year old. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, happy birthday to her. Anybody back here? Another one? Who, Debbie? Oh, no, behind her. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, happy birthday. Let's say happy birthday. I asked for anniversaries, wouldn't it? Let's shake hands with the person next to you and welcome them to the church this morning. Have a time of fellowship.
Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand. Be on the screen. We shall see the king someday. see the king someday on that blessed morning clouds will disappear we shall see the king someday we shall see the king someday we shall sound and sing someday gathered round the throne when he shall call his own we shall see the king someday. After pain and anguish, after toil and care, we shall see the king someday. Through the endless ages, joy and blessing share, we shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. Shout and sing someday. Gathering round the throne when we shall call his own, we shall see the king someday. After foes have conquered, after battles won, we shall see the king someday. After strife is over, after set of sun. We shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gathered round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. There with all the loved ones who have gone before. We shall see the king someday. Sorrow past forever on that peaceful shore. We shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gathered round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. Amen. Next, let's turn to page 223. Hallelujah. 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 I will pray. 
gracious, loving Heavenly Father, Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for another wonderful day of life. Thank you for bringing everybody out this morning to your home, Heavenly Father, to listen to your word through Brother Lynn this morning, Lord. Please be with all those that couldn't make it this morning, Lord, due to illness or any other reason, Heavenly Father. Please be with Jerusalem and Israel and protect them, Lord. And all these things I ask in Jesus' name.
Good morning. morning. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke this morning. As you're turning to Gospel of Luke chapter 1, I guess you heard about the lady that called her husband after she got to work and asked him a question. She said, uh, have you ever felt like that you were uh, just experiencing pain all over? Uh, Sort of like uh, somebody having a voodoo doll and, and sticking pins in you? And he said, uh, mm, no, uh, not really. She said, interestingly, she said, uh, what about now? <laughs> Let's stand in reverence to the holy word of God. Beginning with Luke's gospel, chapter 1. Thus saith the Lord, beginning with verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. That basically says that they were not sinless, 
but they were faithful people to the Lord. And they had no children because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Let's pray, please. Our Heavenly Fathers, we bow our hearts before you this morning. We first of all just come thanking you and praising you for the privilege that we have to come to this place and meet in your presence without fear of life or limb. Father, we thank you. Jehovah God, we thank you. We thank you and we ask today that you would open the eyes of the blind, that you would unstop the ears of the deaf. That, Lord, they might hear your voice today. We do welcome you in this place, sweet, sweet Holy Spirit of God. Father, I pray today that if there's anybody here that needs to hear from you, that, Father, you would open their hearts and their minds to put away the cares of this life and the ways of this world, that they would hear your voice. Father, I pray that, that you would hide me and use me, that you would forgive me of all my many, many sins, that you would cleanse me by the power of the blood and use me as your mouthpiece today that we might hear from you. Father, we thank you for all those that have come. We thank you for those that could not be here, Lord, and ask you to minister to them from where they are. But right now, we ask that your will be done, that you speak to our hearts, and if there be anybody within this place that has never trusted Jesus Christ, that has never fully surrendered their heart and life to you, that, Father, today will be that day in knowing that you can and will meet each need for those willing to call upon you. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for all things, but most of all, for the sacrifice of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the precious, precious blood that ran from Calvary, that made an atonement for sin for all mankind. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, there is... Things that sometimes majorly impact us. I think today we can find through the passage and through other things uh, how deeply impacted prayer can be. And I know that most of you sitting in here today know that. We all know how powerful prayer can change things. I mean by the power of God. But Jesus here in the key message is by Dr. Luke is that Jesus came to seek and save those which were lost. He came to live among sinners. He came to live among sinners to let them know, to let us know, let us all know, let all mankind know that He loves them. And that He is the help that can meet each and every need that they might have. And not only does he love them and is he willing to help them, but he died for them. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all. And this morning we find a couple here that are righteous before the Lord. Righteous before the Lord. I find that really astounding as we look at Zechariah's life. Zechariah, the Bible says, was a priest. Uh, he was a minister of God. He went into the temple and, and ministered there. He taught the scriptures. Uh, there were many uh, priests during that day, uh, somewhere around 20,000. They were divided up and, 
and equally spread out. But this was his specific time and day to be in the temple. He was a man of God that went to the temple, worshipped the Lord in the temple. And this was his day to perform burning the incense. And we know the story of how the angel appears to him. But it also says his wife, Elizabeth, was of the daughters of Aaron. And that they were a godly couple. They were a righteous couple. What does that mean to you? That they were righteous before God. What that means is they were first of all justified before God. Being justified before God simply means that we have understood that God sent his son to die for us. That he gave his life on the cross of Calvary for us. And if we're willing to confess our sins and put our faith in him. That he will forgive us if we will fully surrender to him, and it justifies us by the righteousness of Jesus Christ to approach the Father's throne and ask the Father of those things in which we have need of. And on behalf of others, we enter, make intercessory prayer sometimes. But being righteous before God is more than just being justified. And I know that some of you know this, but I want us to all understand this morning that being righteous before God is not only being justified, but it's being sanctified. What is sanctification? I don't know if this is a good definition, but it's, a, it's very fitting for what the Bible teaches us. Being sanctified means you get discipled. Because when you get discipled, you continue to live for the Lord. Okay? We don't get justified by coming before the Father and saying, I ask you to forgive me, I accept you as my Lord, and then walk out on Him. I'm reminded of a time when I was in college, there were several of us guys that were kind of in a little group, and there was a young man that, as we were having our exams, Dr. Bill Mason and Dr. Mike Morrow and some of those guys were very, very tough on their examinations. And this young man, one day he said, uh, they're just too tough. He said, they just ask too tough of questions. And uh, we told him, said, well, you know, all God asks of us is to do our best. And when we do our best, then God will handle the rest. But one day we came in and one of my colleagues told me, he said, you know, he said, uh, Ed, he jumped ship. It got too hard for him. My friends, listen to me. The ministry is hard. It's not easy to be a Christian. It's not easy. Listen, you not only need to be justified by the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ before the Heavenly Father, but we need people today that are sanctified, people that are going to stay the course. we got too many people bailing out of church today. Instead of coming to church, they're leaving the church. Why? I truly believe a big part of it is because they are not sanctified. Now, sanctified means that we continually grow. It doesn't mean you get to a place that you've learned all you need to know, but it's a continual growing in the Lord. But we need to be discipled to become sanctified Christians in that sense, to keep on doing what we need to do for the Lord. God's plan was unfolding and preparing the way for Jesus Christ to come to earth here in our passage today. If you'll notice today that verse 6, it says, And they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. That verse says something else to me. That verse tells me that they were busy doing what God wanted them to do and being obedient to Him. And being busy is a time that we can find that God will call on us to do what He wants us to do sometimes. Moses and David were caring for the sheep. Gideon was threshing wheat. Peter, James, and John were mending the nets. It's harder to steer my tractor when it's not running. So if you get the point here, if I start the tractor, the power steering works a whole lot better. So when you get busy, God will start the driving in the direction he wants you to go by what he wants you to do. But Elizabeth was a, a, a very devout lady as Zechariah was a man. This couple was righteous before God. Both were just absolutely ministry-driven. 
They had given their hearts, their souls, they had fully surrendered their lives to God. And the only sorrow I do believe they had was that they had no children. And they're getting up in years, maybe 50, 60 years old. And they made this a matter of prayer. Scripture reveals that as parents, they would be committed to teach this child. If God were to answer their prayer as he uh, heard heard, uh, them praying for this child. And, And scripture teaches us that if God answers this prayer and he gives us this child, we will be committed to teaching him the ways of God. That's important in our society today. Being obedient. Because, you know, in all honesty, every single one of us in here individually chooses to live a blessed life or a cursed life, according to the Word of God. They were living a a blessed life. They were living the abundant life, I do believe. And as they were doing that, they chose to live the blessed life. You know, we can choose to live the cursed life. What is the cursed life? Well, I choose to disobey God. I choose to do it my own way. I choose to live outside the will of God. And you can do that and you can be cursed by God in a matter of speaking. But you and I know as a righteous couple, as a righteous person, we can live right before God and experience the blessings of God and the abundance of those many blessings, God says. Living the blessed, abundant life allows God to bless the next generation. Now let's listen to this for a minute. Living the abundant life, blessed life of God will affect the next generation. Let's look at it from the standpoint of America. We live in this blessed country, my friends, because of our founding fathers and the Judeo-Christian faith in which they founded this country upon. And you and I are living today and reaping a reward But is that coming to an end? Is that coming to an end in the sense that people are acting like they don't want freedom anymore? There are so many people really make me feel, I'm sure make many of you feel, like they don't want the freedoms that we have anymore. So it's our responsibility as believers in Christ right now to keep the charge and the command for the next generation and the kids and our grandkids. I'm concerned for my grandchildren. I'm concerned for my little great-granddaughter if the country continues to go in the direction that it's going. I don't know about you, but I don't like the way and the things I'm seeing in our world today, especially here in our own United States of America, by what we were founded upon of the Christian values that our founding forefathers brought this country to be. It's such a change. But how does it work? By the obedience of each generation is how the next generation will live. Look at the data from Harvard. As I have researched this in America, it says the opposite. Now notice what I'm about to share with you. The opposite is taking place in Israel, but it's a reverse here in the United States of America. The silent generation. That's the World War II generation that went through the Depression. 49% of those people were claimed to be born again. Bible believers. Look back at the 40s and 50s, and one half of the people claimed Christianity. Many people say that was the good old days. They had it hard. It may have been a little tough, but that was the good old days. And then you look at the baby boomers. Start declining from 49% of the World War II generation to 42% in the baby boomers, baby boomers generation. X generation down to 33%. In the millennials, 26%. In Gen Z, 20%. In the alpha generation, we don't know because they're too young. But can you see the decline as to what's going on and been going on for several years here in America? Without our society, we can blame the politicians on behalf of what's going on. We can blame the schools, we can blame music, we can blame Hollywood, we can blame all kinds of things, but the most powerful indicator we have in the next generation following our Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah God, is the parents. 
The parents aren't doing and have not been doing their job. They have not been leading and living the life that God called them to live. And if you do not live and do the thing that God called you to do, then your child is going to go just a little bit different. And their children is going a little bit different. And you see how the generation declines. If family will live and teach children the ways of the Lord, they can overcome what's going on in the public schools. They can overcome what's going on in these colleges. You know, this is a crazy society today, folks. I mean, it's absolutely crazy out there. In verse 13, for thy prayer is heard. The angel of the Lord told Zechariah. Zechariah, thy prayer has been heard. Someone said the greatest prayer closet is a sanctuary for the individual. Somebody said when you pray, pray with energy. Pray with enthusiasm. Pray specifically. Pray with a pure life. And watch what happens. In 2 Kings chapter 20, Hezekiah, you know the story or the most of you do. Hezekiah was sick. He was sick unto death, I guess, because the Bible says that Isaiah came to him and told him, Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're going to die. God told me to come by and tell you that. He immediately went to the Lord in prayer. And as he went to the Lord in prayer, he said, Lord, I've walked in truth. Lord, I've lived a pure, with a pure heart. Lord, I've done right in your sight. Now, that didn't mean he was a perfect man, no. But it meant he was an uprighteous man. And the Lord told Isaiah, he hadn't got very far away until he told Isaiah, you go back and you tell him, I've heard his prayer, I've seen his tears, and I will heal him. And the Bible tells us that three days he returned to the house of the Lord and God added 15 years to his life. Major impact. On praying with energy, praying specifically, and praying with a pure heart, a pure life. In 2 Samuel 30, verses 1 through 4, the Amalekites invaded Ziglag, destroying the wives, the children, taking all the plunder. When David found this, he told Abithar, bring the ephod. David prayed. David prayed. And the Bible tells us in that story, if you turn over and read about it, that everything was recovered. Everything was recovered. recovered. So, have you lost anything in the course of your life? Have you lost the opportunity to do something God wants you to do? Have you lost time that was valuable to God? Have you lost resources? Have you lost anything in a sense as that David did that day? But do we understand as David understood being a man of God after God's own heart and being a righteous man, I do believe, that he cried out to God with energy, enthusiastically. He cried out specifically. And he cried out with a pure heart. And God answered that prayer. God will answer your prayer. God will answer your prayer. In 1 Chronicles 4, 9, Jabez cried out to the Lord for his blessings and to keep him from harm. Are you seeking a change in life? Are you labeled as having a wrong name? Are you seeking the Lord's blessings? Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given. Acts 16, Paul and Silas, everybody knows the story. Persecuted, sent to prison. Didn't complain, didn't feel defeated. They were praising God, the Bible says. The Bible says at midnight, they were singing hymns. And singing hymns, God heard their prayer. It reached heaven, an earthquake came. As a major impact, the doors opened, they were released. Are you being bound by some addiction? Is your heart been captured by worldliness? Are you in physical or spiritual prison this morning? My friends, may I say to you that Jesus Christ can set you free. Amen. Whatever it is in your heart, whatever it is in your life, 
If you would just totally, you've got to totally give it away. You've got to totally surrender it. I've told this story a couple, three times in this church, and I feel like God wants me to tell it again right now. Oh, Arthur, I was in Iraq leading some teams into Iraq, doing water purification systems, renovating schools, and one thing or another. And oh, Arthur, he was in the military. Arthur was a young man. He was probably about 23 years old. And Arthur and I got to know one another because they were actually kind of keeping a guard on us and watching over us while we were in there doing what we were doing. And Arthur and I got a chance to sit down in the evenings and talk. And Arthur said one night, he said, you know, he said, Brother William, he said, I really feel like you're a spiritual guy. I said, well, I don't know about how spiritual I am, but I love God. He said, well, let me tell you my story. And he said, me and my wife was in the bed one night asleep on our little farm. And he said, God came to me and he said, he woke me up and he said, it was pouring down rain. It was raining cats and dogs. He said, it was raining so, so hard. And he said, God, uh, why did you wake me up? Arthur said, I was a godly man. I'd give my life to the Lord. And he said, Arthur, I want to talk to you. And Arthur said, I got up and I went in the living room. And he said, all right, Lord, I'm here. And he said, no, he said, I want to talk to you outside, Arthur. And Arthur said, Lord, it's pouring down rain. It's raining really hard out there. He said, I want to talk to you outside, Arthur. Arthur said, I went outside and walked up over the hill. He said, I stood there looking straight up in the air. The rain beat me in the face. He said, all right, Lord, I'll do anything you ask. He said, Arthur, I want everything you got. I want it all. Arthur said, I stood there for a minute. And I thought, and he said, I took my coat off. Literally, this is a true story. He said, I took my coat off. I wadded it up, and I threw it over the hillside. And he said, there, Lord, he said, my clothes on my back belong to you. He said, you've been good to me. You've been gracious to me. You're my Lord. There's my clothes. He said, everything I got belongs to you. He said, no. He said, Arthur, I want everything you got. Arthur said, I began to think and I began to wonder. He said, I reached in my back pocket and I pulled out my wallet. He said, I took it and he said, I literally, he didn't say whether he had any money or not. You know, he said, <laughs> literally, I throwed it over the hillside. And he said, there, Lord, he said, there it is. He said, that's everything I got. And the Lord said, Arthur, I want everything you've got. Arthur said, Lord, you know my heart. I've given it all to you. The clothes off of my back, the money, everything I have, it belongs to you. He said, I want everything you've got. Arthur, Arthur said, Lord, I don't have anything else I know of to offer you. But my wife, she's laying down in the bed asleep. This is a true story. Arthur said, that's who I want. And one week later, the very moment and time that he stood on the hill talking to God, his wife died in a car accident. My friends, are you willing to surrender it all to God? To make God all of your life? That you will become a child of God and become a disciple child of God and be not just justified but sanctified before the Lord God. And that you will pray with earnesty, with sincerity, specifically with a pure heart. And you do. And many of you know in here, God will answer prayers and there will be a major impact. You'll have an encounter with God and it'll make a major impact in your life because it will be a complete change for the good and the glory and the purpose of God and why He came. Oh, my friends, listen. Most astounding answers come, I do believe, when everybody is praying. Look at verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. Zechariah was inside the holy place. But the rest of them were in church. Oh, oh yeah. They were in church praying. Praying earnestly. God said, Zechariah, I've heard your prayer. God was guiding the events of history to prepare the way for Jesus to come to earth. Zechariah and Elizabeth didn't. Go through the motions of following God and His ways. They backed it up with their outer lives by their inward obedience from their heart. And that's why they were called upright in the sight of God. What were Zechariah and Elizabeth praying for? Were they praying for John? Possibly so. But I don't 
know as to what and being uprighteous as they were that they might not have been praying for Jehovah God for the Messiah to come for the baby Christ to be born God answered with a son that filled the Bible says with the Holy Ghost a righteous couple prayed for a son given a son taught him everything that he needed to know about living for God in the right way filled with the Holy Ghost for a purpose God said that they said that God said he will reach multitudes of people in Israel as our worship team comes this morning have you lost an opportunity have you lost a resource have you lost time before God and you know it this morning are you seeking a changed life that you're so tired of this messed up world and the way that things are within your life have you been labeled with the wrong name are you bound to some addiction have you been captured by this world are you physically are you spiritually ill this morning if any of the above are you you can come right now in this sanctuary in the presence of God and give your heart and life to Jesus or come and talk to him about it this morning oh my friends listen And they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. They were not sinless, but they were faithful. They were not only faithful, but they were busy about doing what God wanted them to do. And they received by the prayers that they lifted up the abundance of a blessed life. Again, my friends, we can live a blessed life and we can live a cursed life. You can live a pretty good life or you can live the best life. The best life is when you totally and fully surrender it all to Jesus Christ. You know, God wants the very best from us and we're to give Him our very best. If you're not giving Him your best this morning, won't you come talk to him? Won't you come get it right with him? You can't make it right with me. I can't do anything for you. I wish I could. But I can't help you other than to tell you I know somebody that can. There's many in here that can tell you. They know somebody that can. His name is Jesus Christ. He's Jehovah Jireh God. He's the living Savior. And he can help you. And he will help you. He wants to help you. He desires to help you if you'll just come. All you got to do is come. Don't let pride hold you back. If you're sitting there this morning, you know things just aren't right in your life. If you've been robbed of opportunity, if you've been robbed of resources and time, come this morning. Talk to God about it. Leave this place knowing how well it's been to be blessed and to live that blessed and abundant life as we stand and sing. What number, brother? It's on the screen. Almost persuaded.
take them and make sure that all is well with you. Father, if there's anything in our hearts or in our lives that we shouldn't have, help us to be mindful of what we're going on. Guide us, Lord. Take care of us, sir. Help us to be mindful of the care. We might lift you up to those around us. How great you are, as you are great, Lord. You are wonderful. Praise you today for all the things. Praise you for services today, for good being done in our lives. Or for the way that today as we go home, Lord, as we come here and see you come, the children come, you know who they are. You know what our hearts say. Lord, we just pray. Yeah. Mm-hmm.